गुड मॉर्निंग पीपल वेलकम टू सक्सेस ट्री क्लासेस वेल वी आर स्टार्टिंग नाउ न्यूज़ पेपर मंथन वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ न्यूज़ पेपर मंथन विल कवर करंट अफेयर एनालिसिस मीन्स एनालिसिस ऑफ द न्यूज़ पेपर्स द इम्पोर्टेंट न्यूज़ पेपर्स एंड इम्पोर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स इन दैम फॉर एग्जाम्पल हिंदू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस बिजनेस स्टैंडर्ड मेंट दीज काइंड ऑफ द पेपर्स विल कवर Moreover, we'll do Yojana Economic Survey in in the India Air Book of next year. My next question is, why the cyclones? There are more cyclones or more frequency and of more intensity cyclones in the along the eastern coast than the western coast. India. This can be yes, correct. Of India, Indian coast, because it's Bay of Bengal is more open. is larger compared to arabian sea and is bengal more open or arabian sea more open arabian sea is there something to relation with the rivers flow to try to think what are the condition why the cyclone happens right is there any condition relevant to bay of bengal or arabian sea area or any other reason that you understand Okay, all over the world, how the what are the different cyclones? You have you heard about typhoons, hurricanes? What are these? Different wind speed. These same types. Cyclones. These are, but named according to different reasons. In Indian Ocean, they are known. They are named as cyclones. In Atlantic Ocean, hurricanes. In Pacific Ocean, that is in the Western Pacific Ocean along China, Japan, typhoons, right? Cyclones only. These are. See, one thing is, the major reason is that. Do you see there? Uh, okay, the typhoons that are occurring in the South Western Pacific. Do you understand uh, the direction? Meaning, how do we do it, right? Uh, which portion of the which portion will be South West Pacific? Sanjana, what are you? South Western Pacific. Which area are we talking about? Name some country which are along the southwest coast. Philippines. Sorry. Philippines. Yes, correct. Philippines, China, Japan, and these are along. Southwest. Yeah, this one. Philippines, China, lower Malaysia. region. Yes, yes, correct. And the sudden uh, this typhoons occurring in southwest coast as well. A sudden proportion of these typhoons they cross into the Malacca Strait and it coming comes into the Indian Ocean. And where they come to the Bay of Bengal. And the reaches to the eastern coast of India, where there is no such influence of cyclones great, uh, generating somewhere else and coming to Caribbean Sea. These, uh, these like Varda and all that, these are part of these. Yes, that's what I'm saying, sir. See, there are two ways the cyclones can come to eastern coast. One way is cyclones generated within the Bay of Bengal and coming to eastern coast. Secondly. Cyclones generated as a part of typhoons in the southwest part of the Pacific, and then coming to Bay of Bengal area and eastern coast of India. Right. Secondly, the collection, even if you see that uh, a major portion of the cyclones generated in the Arabian Sea. It goes away from the western coast of India as per part of the trade winds. You see the how the direction of trade winds. Right? Yeah. 
So when any cyclones are generated here, the tendency is to move away from the west coast of India. Whereas if any cyclone that is generated here, tendency to hit the eastern coast of India. Clear? Thirdly, this Bay of Bengal is more enclosed. More enclosed. This, uh, look, look over in the map. Hyper Atlas is this open atlas, or you can look in the map itself. Bay of Bengal is more closed relatively. Right? So it has more continental impact. There are two periods on which cyclones are then developed, one is May to June and uh, uh, October and November. The peak period is in November, another is in May. Now, as there is more content continentality impact effect on the Bay of Bengal area, so there is there are the surface water of Bay of Bengal is warmer in comparison to the Arabic Sea. You understand continentality effect, right? That is, um, I will start with geography. <laughs> okay. We do explain this. Very poor geography. Earth's and land, land gets heated fast. Correct. So, as more part of land is enclosing this, uh, this Bay of Bengal area, so it has more continental impact. Right? So, even the water will be warmer in comparison to the more open sea that is Arabian Sea. And as we have uh, discussed that, one of the Good favorable condition for any tropical cyclone to be developed is warm surface water, warm ocean water. So these are major reasons why there are more tropical cyclones on the eastern coast impacting it than the western coast. Then there are different uh, categories of cyclones you can see on the image. Can you see that category 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in your notes itself? Right? The intensity or even the effect gets intensified as you move higher in the category. So in the higher category, category number 5, the wind speed is maximum is, and does the widespread destruction. No need to remember the speeds, just remember categories in the increasing order, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And just remember what is the uh, range of speed impact around 250 km per hour in the highest category. Then there is one uh, phenomenon that is storm surge that is linked to tropical cyclones. Storm surge. Storm, storm surge. What is that? When cyclone reaches the coast it brings very high waves on the coastal areas very high waves and ultimately it inundates the coastal areas does a destruction on that because of these high waves see storm surge so means surge means in fact the waves are being surged because of the impact of this storm that is cyclone So the question can come, for example, storm surge is the phenomena linked to option A, tropical cyclone, option B, uh, tsunamis, option C, some other, say, tornado, whatever they give it. That is linked to the cyclones, not to the tsunami. Even with tsunami, the wave increases at the coastal areas, but region is different. It is not linked to storm surge, in fact, generally. Then how the naming is done for the cyclones, you can see there in the notes itself how the cyclones are named. So the different countries in the area of Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea, there are eight countries, they have given their names and on the basis of these list, naming names are given to the different cyclones. What things is kept in mind generally that the name should not be culturally sensitive, it should be neutral in fact. right? And these names are not reused. 
if it creates any destruction and all these are not reused as it is done in the say atlantic ocean the uh, the uh, hurricanes they are so there the names are generally reused as well but here it is not another thing what is the benefit of naming a cyclone general cyclones are named in a small word that is easy to remember and easy to pronounce as well so that people can remember it right what is the impact or benefit of naming a cyclone that it creates awareness among people you know worth right the uh, previous cyclone that come to chennai or to the eastern coast of india once you remember cyclone it creates awareness among people and it helps in the disaster mitigation and preparedness right so it is another positive benefit impact of naming the cyclones with that soul from uh, this part you just read it so what you need to do whenever you read these kind of topics go back home open your geography and crd revise the whole chapter when in the chapter in which you find cyclones and this is the way you how do you revise you keep on uh, revising those topics it helps you in a more comprehensive revision at the end of the preparation and that is faster revision within the same day you need to revise whole geography how do you do it if you keep on revising in these periods as well then only you can uh, get good understanding of those topics the same way for example we do one topic we do topic on uh, say women we have done on sex ratio today one of the question so how to get the maximum benefit of these one the notes that we prepare on one note go to the page read the whole page whatever the topics comes on that page so we have uh, in gs paper one social issues we have one page on women so whatever the important information comes articles comes we compile on that particular page so not only reading that particular article only read the whole page in this way slowly slowly you will be able to complete the whole the all of the notes of that we have prepared them right so get this habit of reading them revising them again and again else it will be very bulky notes at the end so more revision more you understand more you are able to retain i tell you the benefit a huge benefit while you attempt in the paper you have the ready made points in that case you can count on your finger for example you speaking to your friends or to any anybody writing answer question on women then you should be able to remember seven eight points automatically quickly to that particular context in what context the question has been asked same way disables ready made points 5 6 7 8 points ready made you should have those points in your mind at any period of time anybody ask you you should be ready with those points at any period of time same way other topics in polity ir the bills though this year they didn't ask about the bills but you never know last year they were they focused over the bills a lot in 2015 mains so you should be ready with the bills as well child labor there are so many topics so in, at least the important topics revise them multiple times at least remember the keywords six seven keywords on which the points would be based we come to next topic india's missing girl children so major points you have, you people have covered in uh, okay <coughs> Amartya Sen uh, article was and missing woman. If you heard about it, missing woman, uh, he had given a concept of this missing woman while comparing Indian sex ratio with the Saharan sub-Saharan sub-Saharan African countries sex ratio. Missing woman means missing woman means what? The same thing. missing girl children means poor sex ratio and specifically poor child sex ratio what is the present size sex ratio as per 2011 census what is that no 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 sex ratio this is something this is sex ratio at birth done by registrar general of india i am asking about 2011 census 
sex ratio. You cannot remember sex, this sex ratio at birth of every year done by the registrar general. Okay, it, it won't be feasible in fact. Important thing is to remember census sex ratio. 943 overall and 919 for child sex ratio. So it helps why if any question comes, you should have the data to substantiate your answer. Similarly, we have compiled this data comparison of this. I will give you notes on that. I am not sure whether, whether I have done it on one note or not, but I have um, made my own notes. So I will share those with you in which the comparison has been done on terms of sex ratio, on terms of literacy rate, on terms of labor force participation with respect to overall population, with respect to women, with respect to SC, with respect to ST and even among women in SC and ST. Are you able to understand what I am talking about? Means if any question comes in women and say it's uh, anything about employment of women, very poor participation, then you have this data around 25 point something percentage is the labor force participation of women overall. Then you show that even this labor force participation is lower among SC and STs. Then you have that data as well. If any question comes on literacy or in education, then you have this data. What is the literacy rate? Around 72-73% is the present literacy rate as per the census. Right? Then you compare the gap between male and female. You have the data. Then you have the data that even this literacy rate is much poorer among SC and STs. And even worst affected are women of SC and STs. Then you have the data of that particular uh, impact as well. Though it will take efforts to cram these data, but these data are highly relevant. Because see, education, women, right, labor force. If, for example, any social equation comes regarding in the, in the paper one, social issue part, from SC and ST perspective, right? One thing is you generally write poor sex ratio. Sex ratio is higher in fact. Among ST, sex ratio is higher. Now you know that as well. And you have the data as well. You write it. Or you write in general, for example, very poor literacy rate, right? Then you say very more poor literacy rate among women. But you substantiate with the data and it will help you to fetch more marks. Effort will be required to read it, cram it, to revise it again and again and finally to use it in fact. Unless you start using it, you won't be able to, it won't give you any benefit. How to use it? You write in the answers. For half an hour, say for first half an hour, you write the answer, right? So try to gather information, try to bring certain important data that you can write in your answers. Okay, we uh, move to the next part. So what else you can uh, write in this? What are the go government initiatives to address the sex ratio? You mentioned Betty Bajao, Betty Padao, right? PCP and DT Act. There are various uh, Sukanya Smriti scheme you mentioned. So one thing is to save our girl child, right? Means how we can improve the sex ratio. One thing is hitting on the mindset, education, awareness, awareness of Nukkad Natak, right? Bring NGOs, Seva, write the examples. You have Women Empowerment NGO named as Seva. When you say awareness, okay, just writing awareness is one thing, then write there. By your, for example, Nukkad Natak. Nukkad Natak is very influential way to change the mindset, to spread awareness. Have you seen, have you seen any of the Nukkad Natak, right? So you could see how uh, yeah, deep impact, yes, really correct. And <laughs> so this one point, you can write at multiple places because awareness is something you can write in so many different equations and more importantly in ethics as well. In ethics, certain question will be where you have to change the behavior of the people. 
in case study right one of the case study last year it, uh, it was something patriarchal mindset something like this and uh, certain violence had happened against the girls of a, of a uh, village and the village elders were against sending them to schools right so one thing is taking the prompt action that is a short term action that is how you can manage the handle the situation short term secondly the long term solution so whenever even when you attempt case study first solution will come directly to your mind that is to handle the situation at the moment how you do it but sec another thing to fetch more marks in that you should give a long term solution that the same situation doesn't recur again समझ पा रहे क्या कह रहे हैं अटेम्प्ट द केस स्टडीज देन वी कैन डिस्कस सम डे दिस ईयर केस स्टडी वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दिस पेपर 2 एंड 3 वी हैव डिस्कस्ड पेपर 2 एंड पेपर 2 एंड 3 पेपर 4 यू अटेम्प्टेड वी कैन डिस्कस द केस स्टडीज ओके so you can also include gender busting as well as one of the solution because gender busting has the impact overall you bring the women centric policies women centric scheme programs right all the points all the means there are so many points you can write over this topic but here in question like they have not asked for the solution they have just asked for they have asked the reasons but i will suggest you ask yeah right? but i will suggest right certain solutions as well okay. sorry okay. yes correct the conclusion yes this is a way how you can get one these one one extra marks but no need to uh, make the question as it seems you are writing solutions only what i mean to say solution need to write it even if it has not been asked but in small proportion the major crux of the question demand of question should be the major part of your answer next is demonetization election commission electoral reforms Okay, do one thing. This one, a uh, woman topic. This India's missing culture. Quickly revise. Then I just ask certain questions from you. Quickly revise this topic. India's missing girl children.
Yes, Vibhu, made points of this article. Major points of this article. Uh, sir, basically, first uh, it talks about the the biggest reason two phenomena phenomena which are interrelated: sex selective abortion and uh, excess female infant mortality due to strong cultural preference. It is a policy concern because it violates human rights, deprives the country potential economic and social contribution. Uh, and it is also having a long, long run adverse impact marriage market in Haryana and Punjab. Uh, uh, in the background of this abortion, uh, this uh, PNDP Act we have given, abortion was legalized in 1971, prices fell later on, Act came in 1994. Uh, it also it basically prohibited the diagnosis of a sex of an unborn child. Uh, then, they have, uh, then the loopholes in the system they have highlighted. Under utilization of fund, non renewal of registration. Uh, the basically same uh, points related to the uh, uh, monitoring of this PNDPF by agencies. And uh, at the government level, they have talked that three ministries are managing it uh, on the schemes PN, uh, health and family welfare, women and home affairs. And then uh, it also gives an example that Tamil Nadu, the started credit risk in 1992, still it has now fallen and still babies are being delivered, uh, given up there. So basically it suggests that scheme, uh, scheme is not able to change the mindset of the people. And uh, what needs to be done now, uh, they have talked about Dori, uh, uh, teaching children morals, women uh, socializing and consider, consider and they should be able to consider themselves as equal and uh, gender equality uh, based on social cultural issues and uh, there should be a mix of reinforcement program and support mechanism and uh, uh, Supreme Court and NHRC is also monitoring the situation in India and uh, government has responded recently with Betty Bachao Betty Padao and uh, basically what uh, uh, even uh, we should uh, uh, if we are not able to change that patriarchal set of mindset, at least we should be able to uh, understand it that even in patriarchal, uh, mind, uh, even in patriarchal set, set up, there is a, there is a, a it is essential to maintain a natural balance between uh, women and uh, uh, men and uh, uh, enforcement of law should go in hand in hand with social invent, in, investment uh, through cash in, incentives etc. and uh, uh, social protection half measures. Good. <laughs> so it has also mentioned about dry trafficking as it has been seen. Right? Dry trafficking in Haryana Punjab. Now what is the NGO working uh, to empower people, to protect people, women, victims of dry trafficking? Which NGO is working? Empower people. Empower people. So 
organization to engage constructively with the NGOs like or to fund and craze such NGOs, for example, empower people. Welcome to next topic: demonetization, election commission, and electoral reforms. Now what this article talks about, I just discussed that. Rest you have discussed already in the question. So it talks about the financing, financing of elections in India. How does it happen? One thing is by parties, and another thing by the candidates themselves, right? So in India, the parties are required to disclose the income, but not expenditure. Whereas the candidates are required to disclose expenditure, not the income. It's the other way around. So it means if any elections are happening, so the parties they don't disclose the expenditure, they disclose the income. Whereas the candidates they are supposed to disclose the expenditure. So generally it has been seen that this expenditure limit that is set over the candidates it generally overpasses. How it overpasses? Because they are getting the they are getting the funds from the parties directly and that has not been recorded, right? They get the funds from the corporates as well that again off record. And ultimately, why the corporates they go for off record donations? Ultimately, they also have the black money. Secondly, they don't want to uh, get highlighted that it, it is attached to a particular political party, or it has in way uh, helped in influencing the election by donating this much huge sum of money, and could also impact the uh, coming government's policies in favor or in disfavor of that particular corporate house. So generally, the corporates they do the off record financing of the political parties and the elections so it leads so whenever you find the corporates the financing it brings chronic capitalism because ultimately when any of the party it is receiving or any of the candidates it, it is receiving funds to finance their elections now they get the obligation to serve it back in making the policies which are favorable to those corporates and it generally happens in our uh, democratic system, it generally happens here. So it gives, it recommends certain reforms. One of the reform is, it says, prescribing ceiling for political parties' expenditure, along with the candidates' expenditure. Are you able to get this point, right? Because presently we have a system where candidates' expenditure is prescribed having, having a certain limit. So it says. Along with the candidates, parties' expenditure should also have a certain limit in the expenditure term. Then, uh, many times it has been recommended earlier as well, state funding of elections. And this article recommends state funding of the political parties rather than the whole elections. Right. So, this is another recommendation. Thirdly, internal democracy and transparency within the political parties. Now, we haven't seen... Though the, uh, the political parties, they say, okay, we are uh, uh, working to strengthen this vibrant democracy. But we don't find democracy within the parties themselves. The decisions are taken by certain top echelons of those parties. Right? The lower or the uh, down the hierarchy, the people, the party workers, they are only obeying the what have decided in the political parties on the top levels. So when these political parties they manifest they are part and parcel or to support the democracy they should exhibit democracy within themselves, transparency within themselves by coming into the ambit of RTI. When uh, uh, election commission sorry the information commission says that political parties are also public authorities and they should come under the they are in fact under RTI ambit. Then all political parties they come together to oppose this decision. So they should lead by example, they should, they, they should in fact by themselves come under this, right? So these things are required reforms to be done in the elections and the, and the political parties. Then one of the proposals that we discussed as Election Commission of India proposed in terms of reforming the election and the election commission body itself, that it should be empowered to cancel election in case there is use of money power as well. On muscle power, it has already authority 
to do the same but it also wants only postpone not cancel yep on muscle yes power. correct cancel and no in muscle power you yes. can cancel or it can just postpone no if it has been used say uh, muscle power booth capturing happens it can cancel the elections and postpone as well it can do it so they are demanding to do it on the money power as well then it says one of the uh, proposal is that political parties who have not contested election for last 10 years to be deregistered why they are just as a name on the papers just taking the benefit of tax exemptions because the political parties they enjoy tax tax exemptions right so those should be deregistered once they are not contesting elections at all and for what purpose they are enjoying these benefits even from basically funding main yes, political yes. party this yes yes correct correct correct. Sure. correct even the funding that is diverted by route of these multiple other parties which are only existing on papers on papers yes then paid news to be made an electoral offense it is another recommendation so read the major points of this article quickly
yes i'm done with this i come to the next topic this is a uh, new bill that is rights of person with disability bill so now this bill has been passed and it has replaced the previous bill that was uh, rights of person with disability equal opportunities protection rights full participation act 1995 so it was in short it was called persons with disability pwd act persons with disability act 1995 now this act is replaced by rights of persons with disability now certain provisions that is has changed from the previous one how in what way this present bill is Uh, improvement from the previous one, and what are the various loopholes in the present bill? So now it has increased the number of condition in which a person is to be treated as disabled. Earlier it was seven, now it is nineteen conditions. So in keywords, you need to remember small small points so that if the question comes directly with respect to the bill, you can write it in a concrete manner. That forty percent of the disability. they are given certain benefits reservation education employment preference in the various schemes as well moreover uh, access universal access to the buildings to the infrastructure to the various public infrastructure right so barrier free access to the infrastructure is to be ensured under this bill then uh, the guardianship is to be given by the district court and it can decide over two kinds of guardianship one thing it is limited guardianship another is plenary in limited it is jointly along with the mentally ill person uh, uh, consigns you can say or with the thoughts in plenary even without consulting directly the uh, district court can give guardianship to a person as per its own understanding then in terms of the a punishment in case of any violation of the provisions of this act 6 months imprisonment fine of 10000 rupees and higher penalty for any subsequent violations so these are major points of this new bill for disabled there is a rights of person with disability bill now what are the issues or in this bill one of the issues that disability comes as a state subject then how the central government or the parliament can impose certain condition on the state and the say local bodies to implement this act over them right secondly it has talked it has not outlined from where the finances would be mobilized because for any of the scheme program any of the act to be implemented certain finances needs to be Uh, say mobilized so that part is missing in this particular act and thirdly about the fine or imprisonment it says there are many obligations the omission or commission of that would lead to the imprisonment but it would be very difficult to find out or in fact it uh, certain people could be wrongly implicated as well because in our culture many times certain careless behavior happens right and their obligations are so many that it could lead to more of the litigation and more of the implications then one of the issue is about inconsistency with other laws in certain cases for example termination of pregnancy and minimum penalty for outraging the modesty of women so in these cases it is having the conflicting provisions with present bill so these are major issues in uh, persons right of persons with disability bill so it has taken certain provisions the previous bill was quite old 1995 bill it was and we had been carrying with this even uh, after you can say 11 years we are having the same uh, so time was time and need demand was there to have more relevant provisions as per demand of the society 
to recognize more kind of disabilities as the disables so that they can also have recognition as well as certain benefits as per the government scheme and programs it has incorporated many of the points that were there in the un convention on rights of person with disability india has been signatory to un convention on rights of person with disability it was ob obligatory over india to have this in our legal framework what is another international uh, platform for the rights of people with disability yesterday i think i said a name for that insion strategy korea Ncon strategy for the rights of people with disability. Generally, in Asia Pacific region. This conference, this uh, convention was for Asia Pacific region. Just remember the name itself. No need to have a more explanation of that. Revise this article right now.
डन टेल द मेजर पॉइंट्स ऑफ दिस आर्टिकल ट्राई टू रिकॉल एंड जस्ट डोंट लुक ओवर इट सर फर्स्ट 7 टू 19 नंबर ऑफ डिसेबिलिटीज 40 परसेंट रिजर्वेशन टू ईयर टाइम पीरियड फॉर एक्सेस फ्री बैरियर एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड वायलेशन सिक्स मंथ्स और 10,000 and basically these were the major features of this and uh, uh, the loophole still exists uh, for first is uh, it is a stateless subject disability and still the uh, so center has made laws how it will enforce them uh, second is um, uh, 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 from where the funding will come financing problem uh, third is uh, that uh, the uh, commissioner and uh, commissioner uh, level post at center and state has been continued uh, now uh, from the old end but nowhere it has been given that they should be from pwd category right. and the supreme court judgment at this have not understood 2013 judgment cadre base reservation right. and uh, good points uh, sanjana add certain points if you have anything to add So there is like the bill is strangely makes a clause of non-discrimination but in mandatory only in the government is funded. So I mean they can. We come to the next article. Was already mentioned on the. So what is the Supreme Court judgment resolution? Which. Uh, Last, despite the Supreme Court judgment in 2013 that reservation should be decided on basis of total number of vacancies in particular cadre, rather than the post identified by the government to be filled by person with benchmark disabilities, the bill is stuck to the statute. Despite the Supreme Court judgment in 2013 that reservation should be decided on the basis of the total number of vacancies in a particular cadre, rather than post identified by the government to be filled by the person with benchmark disabilities. It means to say that in every different cadre there are certain vacancies. and based on those the percentage should be decided the percentage to recruit or to be reservation for the disabled disabled persons whereas what the general phenomena is there in the government so there the vacancies are are, are decided on the benchmark of disabilities different disabilities different kind of the you can say uh, reservation for that there is an overall reservation Yes. Right. Then there are separate reservations within the categories. Like visually impaired. Yes. Yes. Person. Correct. Correct. Still, I'm not able to get the clarity on this point. If you leave this point, we can discuss it some other time then. Government schemes now currently uh, that government when it announces uh, the vacancies mm -hmm. if even if if you look at the list we see they have given that one percent for visually impaired one percent correct list. correct okay uh, but the reservation when they take demanded say forty percent or say say five percent that four percent reservation is there currently okay so th that should be allowed to any uh, any yes. disability person any disabled person. It should not be contingent upon that whether if he is visually impaired that he should be get, getting seated that one person only. Ultimately, what I understand is that because of this separate benchmark disabilities, 
I think what I believe that overall overall seats reserved for the disabled are not full are not filled. Right, because there may not be certain number of uh, candidates in a particular kind of disability. They ultimately leading to what? Vac vacancy or not filling those seats in those particular kind of disabilities. Even you cannot spell out each and every vacancy and yes. each and every type of uh, handicapness. So that's what the Supreme Court judgment is regarding that. On the basis of total number of vacancies in a particular category. And coming to the next one, regulating the digital payment industry. I think this uh, kind of noise will go on for 15 20 days more. The construction work is going on on the side building. So, you attempted this question regarding digital payment. Was there any question over this? So as we have seen that post demonetization there has been given a push to the digital payment right uh, Paytm has it has uh, its revenue has risen manifold you have seen that right? <laughs> well government also has uh, encouraged people to use credit cards debit cards mobile money mobile banking and encourage the banks as well to uh, promote the same it is incentivized the cashless payments as well, uh, removing the uh, service interest charge that was to be uh, imposed over the, over the over the card payments as well. So these one of the reason was that because there was less currency available in the market. Ultimately, people had no other choice. Or one, this is the way how uh, so the present government, in fact, tried to move the economy in a cashless manner. So one thing is it was somehow coming over the you can say government. Uh, kind of situation had been created, people were no other way to move towards the cashless economy. So it has a, definitely it has benefits, no arguments in that, it has benefits. Because now cashless economy now means that money would be accounted for, that have come in the records, right. Now the tax evasion would be curbed to a certain extent. Secondly, it would also it has also help or it would also help in the coming years in the financial literacy of the people many of the people they were not even uh, aware about how to use it and were in a way because for any of the financial transaction you need to go to the bank if you're not using the internet banking or the cards so banks were at a far distance they people were not so much comfortable to go to banks each and every other day so it has brought the banks near to the into the wallets of the people they can use it as per their wish by your mobile banking by having a smartphone now beam application has also been launched by the government right so that is another way to give a push to the to the cashless economy mobile banking so benefits on terms of uh, checking checking tax evasion checking corruption bringing more uh, money to the tax net means more revenue to the government so giving a you can say uh, reducing the fiscal deficit as well in that in that context fourthly more easy transactions easy and fast transactions sixthly then you can say less cost cost of doing transaction has also been reduced by going for cashless transactions because one thing is you take out money, then you do it. A lot of cost is involved in that in the transaction. But you do it by just by clicking a click. The cost of transaction is has been reduced. Right. So there are benefits are plethora of benefits. Now this article talks about these benefits have been there, are there definitely, but there are issues attached to these this kind of cashless economy that our country is pursuing. It has said that. People have now the, there has been increased to manifold in the use of the in, into the use of the mobile wallets, Paytm, the mobile banking and all. But the cyberspace has not been so much secured. Right? The regulation are not so are, are not are not so robust. 
also the regulation, the legal infrastructure, the IT infrastructure, cyberspace, cyberspace, all these things need to be strengthened. To ensure whatever the transactions that happen are happening, they happen in a secure cyberspace. As you've seen in the month of uh, late October or early November, there were debit yes, debit card, debit card frauds had happened, and the server was found to be in China somewhere. I think it was Axis Bank or some other bank. Uh, I'm not sure which bank was in, uh, which bank's interface was used for that. But many of the debit cards were then SBI and other major banks. They just you know, blocked the debit cards and sent the new cards to their customers. So this thing happened. Even though people were not using the net banking, for example, say. So you can see how kind of the infrastructure, cyber infrastructure, IT infrastructure, the regulation are lacking in our country. So going cashless is good enough, but doesn't good enough if we don't have sufficient cyber infrastructure to back it, sufficient legal inf infrastructures. For example, any fraud happens. Now, what is the legal remedy? to safeguard the customer's interest. We don't have any law for it. So we should have regulatory infrastructure as well as legal framework for it to safeguard the interest of the consumers. So this is the main crux of this article that it wants to address. So in one point it says about cyber security parameters for digital payment. It's still largely under IT Act and India lacks Loans to protect consumers if they lose money in digital payments. E infrastructure. Then what needs to be done? Legal framework. It it asks to, uh, to be there to identify the various issues like any and uh, to pro to provide protection to the consumers and the cooperation among the different bodies involved in the regulatory framework. It also uh, to provide encourage more and more participants in the system so that there is more competition as well as more and more innovation is pushed to the next level. Then from the RBA side this article uh, suggests the RBA should identify certain payment system as critical and make them systematically important status. It means if in case it, whenever RB does it, for example, certain banks, ICICI, SBI, they are of systematically important status banks. It means people they have that faith, trust in them. That if anything happens, government will support them, support these banks. Only these two are uh, yes. SI, yes. SBI, SIB. SIB. Yes. Yes. Too big to fail. Yes, too big to fail. So, when RB does it, uh, did it for these two, why the government did it? Because ultimately there was this uh, notion in the minds of people that if anything happens, government will support them. Now, the government understands this. It says, ask these two banks to have additional measures to protect themselves. If any case of any uh, financial crisis happens, they should have extra regulations for them so that they could survive themselves and less dependence of the government. It also recommends for one fund that is customer protection fund, customer protection guaranteed fund. Now this fund in case any uh, fraud or this thing happens to protect the consumer interest for that. Then one of the issues you might have seen whenever you install any of the application in your, in your smartphone, it asks access to so many things to your phone, isn't it? Allow this access to your files, to your pictures, to your images, this and that. So multiple applications, you, ne you never know how your information would be handled here. So there are so many mobile wallets and so many other applications which are accessing the information. So this could also be misused because you have the notes section in itself you may be you may have noted your password whatever the information you would have no, noted down in those your sensitive information so this regulation it says to make the digital transaction truly secure the center needs to look into this uh, close as well that information that mobile seeks mobile application seek 
should be in a restrictive manner not in a say umbrella manner asking for information access to each and everything for the purpose it is required it should be for that purpose only so for this purpose as well there should be certain regulatory framework in place so thing is well we have moved very quickly in a very short span of time in the last couple of months the push has been so much but framework has been absent in case anything wrong happens we don't have regulatory framework for that we don't have legal framework for that protection of the consumers and the people we don't have certain uh, guaranteed protection for them cyber security concerns are still prevalent so these things should be addressed these issues should be addressed according to revise this
यस संजना बताइए मेजर पॉइंट्स ऑफ दिस आर्टिकल becoming a trend for India. Mm -hmm. So uh, the cashless economy and uh, being so uh, for their uh, um, for, for ease of transactions and all. So these will give you the easy transition and the transference and everything. But at the same time, what are the loopholes uh, with the digital payments? So we have to see what about the uh, cyber things and the legal framework and these things we have to create a good and really strong uh, skill for, for that we need very strong skills and for particular state uh, for the awareness they are uh, coming with the uh, Yes, we will continue with the points. Sir, first we talk about that uh, it has been uh, solely given to bank banking sector and other wallet system and prepaid options are kept out of the system. Yes. Second, it talks about that uh, it, uh, basically now we are moving in the right direction but overall comprehensive policy is lacking and then it highlights uh, the major problem like cyber cyber security laws it is still under IT yes. uh, and but it doesn't protect the consumers. Uh, the customers who are using it uh, and the uh, infrastructure electronic infrastructure is still weak india is still poor in, even in broadband speed it is behind Nepal and bangladesh Correct. and uh, 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 and uh, regulatory uh, regulatory mechanism is absent basically like giving out discount rates by, uh, but these are given by bank and not by the rba Correct. who is the sole custodian of the money and like we can give example booking of we tickets PBR etc. Access bank accounts are given discount and uh, uh, then what should be done? Uh, basically, a uh, new comprehensive policy is required and uh, it should also uh, consider upcom the upcoming laws like uh, bankruptcy court uh, insolvency. Yes, it should be it should be line -headed. It should not uh, be a conflict with them and. Uh, and uh, basically, self certification uh, should be asked from uh, from the entrepreneurship and, and the government both ask, uh, uh, identifying the technical risks so that awareness can be made out. Awareness can be uh, and basically uh, in for, for future uh, for future also that uh, 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 people should be basically educated in the, uh, in these things and uh, 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 how to use them and uh, also the major one of the major issues. That uh, people people should be ready to accept the digital payment. Uh, their fears and uh, concerns should be overcome. And uh, and basically, uh, then the role of RBI it has asked. Then what RBI needs to be done. Three uh, good points. Next topic we take agriculture and fertile ground for digitization. What are the issues linked to agriculture? Sorry? Issues linked to agriculture. Sir, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in the uh, agriculture, uh, there is a economy concern. So, there are like uh, so much of employment generation from agriculture. So, still, we are, the, uh, we are very much dependent on uh, agriculture. So, but for that, uh, like on that aspect, what we need to do is more, uh, no, like uh, more infrastructure to agriculture, but that is not being done. It's all the ancient kind of uh, work or ancient method of using uh, agriculture. So, in that, we are dependent on agriculture, but what we expect. 
that should be like count from GDP from agriculture that is not coming out. How much what percentage is agriculture contributes to GDP? Two-third of the people engaged are engaged in the agriculture, agriculture right? But the output is not coming. Yes, correct. Part. So we need to develop that infrastructure. We need to modernize the way pattern. We need to sense that you know in which particular area what kind of uh, uh, crop we can grow. So it's maximum utilization of that land to get uh, some uh, you know that Pradhan Mantri also stated that one. Per drop more crop. Per drop more crop. Yes. So in this kind of and then the subsidies which are given from government to maximize the output from agriculture. These kind of things we need to develop. So this uh, topic takes one part of agriculture that if increase the digitization, if we increase the use of technology, in what way it can improve the productivity and the status of agriculture in our country. You will see agriculture as a whole, very important, it is for uh, socio-economic development of our country. A large people, maximum people, if they are engaged in any of the sector, it is agriculture. Around two-third of the people, they are engaged in agriculture sector. Right. But thing is what, the productivity is low. Right. And leading to, as more people are engaged, Per capita income is very low to the farmers. There are more people than required, engaged, disguised, unemployment is there. Moreover, as we see that uh, we can see as uh, people, our population is increasing, population density increasing, more and more food is required. So, for the food security of our country, where on which sector we have to depend on agriculture, but we cannot increase the land. Right, it has a limitation. We cannot cut down the forest and increase land. We can't do that. So ultimately, we have to do the, we have to increase the productivity. That is the solution that we need to look for. So how to increase productivity? That is a major concern whenever government does any of the policy making or implementation. So major focus remains now over increasing productivity. Increasing land area can happen only to a limited level. To what level? For example, converting the wasteland into agriculture, somehow just uh, improving the productivity of certain low productive lands. That could happen. But we, that is also having a limitation to a certain level. Last week, economic survey had two chapters on agriculture. Very beautifully, it had explained. So I will suggest you read those chapters. One chapter is in uh, volume one. Another last year or last year? This year. This year? This year? Economics. Yes. One chapter in volume 1, another chapter in volume 2. It has the good analysis as well as important data is also given there. Right. So it helps to have better understanding and collect the data from that. Even you read from that, then I will provide you my own notes because you won't be able to understand in a good manner from the notes directly because these are short. For the revision purpose only, right? And from the various sources, uh, we have made that. So first, you read in detail, then we'll provide you certain short notes in just say three, four pages. The whole agriculture will be covered. Easy to revise from that. So this particular segment deals with only regarding digitization. How, if we improve the digitization, can help? It can make agriculture and fertile ground for digitization, how it can happen. So, <coughs> digitization, for example, it says that India at, at our country level, the use of technology is very low in agriculture at all the different levels. Whereas, at the world level, there is very high use of technology, internet of things, right? Big data analytics could be done, right? sensors to uh, get the to collect the data on the soil moisture, fertilizers, right, all these things. 
but our at our ground level what do you see we don't find these kind of the technology to be used right so it says that we should push for the use of technology digitization of data right so for example if you use internet of things what is iot internet of things what is that is a science and tech question it is basically like a like one murder case happened in rose in news Hmm. So that speaker, it is connected to the internet and it can update all the Correct. sound and all that. So things like this, which are uh, connected indirectly to through a to a common server. Right. So thing is what Internet of Things means. Whatever things you use in your lives generally. For example, you come to the class, fan, projector, AC, laptop, everything, they are connected to the internet. Smartphone is always connected. Yes. Right. So it means they understand. and they evolve themselves according to my needs for example you come here and say for example you go to home your home is somewhat you can say internet of things home it is so as you go daily they they understand your habits what kind of the environment you need at this period of time so they try to evolve themselves and try the best environment as per your your likings for example this kind of atmosphere temperature around 21 say 16 20 Okay, this uh, this kind of the mood, this kind of music to be played, right? So it is something like this. So it makes the life very simple. It appears to be the same way. This article proposes it to be used in the agriculture as well. It understands, it sees the weather, right? It understands the soil moisture, understand the fertility. The various sensors will help in doing that. right link to internet as well so gives out the best possible solution as well according to the soil various conditions prevalent in that particular farm so farm selective it could again would be and this would help in bringing the best practice and once any of the best practice is evolved then it could be replicated or it could be used in other farms as well and so there's a way how it says to improve the productivity farm wise and overall region wise as well so big data internet of things automation decision support system agriculture robots artificial intelligence it wish to include what is big data big data analytics big data means huge data but that cannot be understood by our simple say computer system unstructured data that is right we have presently also we have huge data that may not bring out certain meaning from that because unstructured right so you need certain special system for that you need the anal analytics for that so once that big data is understood there are huge immense benefit from that so it say Uh, again science and tech technology questions big data so uh, bringing certain system for that to analyze the big data and bring out certain meaningful structure from that so that it could be used in the daily application to improve the life quality so these are various points that this article proposes to bring so what could be done you can read there what needs to be done now you can it says that all inclusive digital platform so in what way it could help end to end service for farmers for example selecting crops optimizing plantation timings seedings and fertilization for means at every level this digitization will help in improving productivity because what crop to be planted now now this is again to help to be used by the digitization right so according to the soil quality according to weather conditions available inputs the proposed crops would be there planted at what timing it should be done what what time seedlings or fertilization then it to be compared with other farmers and best practice to be replicated lesson learned to be applied to other farms as well and that is to be applied automatically to another to maximize the output because from somewhere you have got certain a best practice and 
certain similar conditions are available in other farms so replicate it there but other benefits one thing is the produce could be tracked from farm to table it means what we have seen one of the major issue in our agriculture is post harvest losses losses in the supply chain so once the harvest happens after it through multiple channels multiple ways it passes till the consumer multiple handlings happen right weighing grading transportation to mandis to wholesalers then to here so lot of handling happens and at every level the value degrades at every level there is wastage of the farm produce so once it, it is tracked from the to, to each but uh, of every level so it will help in understanding that and reduce the wastage to maximize the value of the farm produce secondly regarding price discovery issue now it is another major issue that actually exploit the small farmers small and marginal farmers because once they go once they go to the mandis they are not aware of the prevalent prices and they are being exploited by the traders and merchants there the ipmc mandis so how they so they should be every every if every farmer and every merchant and everybody is informed about the prevalent prices so once you empower the farmers in terms of the information available these are the prevalent prices if you empower them you reduce the chances of the exploitation and they get the uh, desired income or desired support system from the uh, this platform so how this price discovery happens because you have the digitization of data every you have the how much is the output how much is the demand everything comes into being and comes out with the what should be the prices of that these are major points of this article i just uh, discuss certain things about apart from this article okay because this article uh, confines itself only to the digitization and how it will help in improving the productivity very important topic every year you can expect total three question from agriculture it is every it is to come right so as you understood that importance of agriculture around two third of people they are dependent on agriculture direct or indirect and to provide food security to our nation is highly important now this year in the budget our finance minister said we have to move from we will support the agriculture sector in a way that it not only provides food security to the nation but the income security to the farmers because once our farmers income get income if they get income security the food security of the nation will automatically be there so what we understood till now that how we can improve the this sector to improve the productivity right so one thing is improve the productivity of the sector another is shift from farm to non farm activities I have seen there are discussed unemployment in agriculture. There are more people engaged in the agricultural activities than required now. So why not to shift them? Why not to skill them in a way? Now it could be done by skilling. Skilling, entrepreneurship, and MSMEs. 
that is shift from farm, farm to, to non farm. Yes, okay. to shift from farm to say industry, right? Because this much of labor or dependence is not required in that. Now here our main focus would be your increase in productivity because here this discussion would be more to be taken discussion. But even if the question comes and you find it fit, the one point can be from this one as well. Shifting the people to the non-agricultural sectors, non-farm activities. Now this will raise issues and solutions to those. First, we discuss about irrigation. What is irrigation? Now, you have seen that what kind of irrigation generally uh, do we use, specifically in North India, where there is luxury of the canals and the rivers. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, flood irrigation is used. Right. And this is highly unsustainable practice of doing the irrigation. Low productivity, waste is a water. Moreover, water is admitted to replace it results into alkalinization, salinization of soil as well. So it deteriorates the soil quality also. And most of the time we are dependent on like uh, you know, nature for this irrigation. The monsoon will come. Not necessarily from flood irrigation, but from canals the need is there. Right. So around 40 47, 48 percent of our area, or that is, uh, so that is irrigated, right? You can say. So around 60 percent of area is the rain-fed agriculture. So if rain-fed agriculture is around 55 to 60 percent of area of our uh, net cropping area, agriculture area is the rain-fed area, means dependent over the monsoon. Rest area you can see is again irrigation system to be in place. So still a major area is the rain pad. So means there has to be developed certain kind of irrigation system for that. Because rainfall, the monsoon is highly erratic. Dependence, you never know certain times, Alino and this and that. So highly erratic monsoon happens. Secondly, and the policy the government has followed. For example, uh, subsidies or power, right? So it in fact motivates and craves the farmers for what? To use more and more water, right? Ultimately resulting into the wastage of water. So policies as well, third, using water resulting crops in areas which are not suitable for those. For example, sugarcane in Maharashtra, rice Lattu, yes, rice, Haryana. And these kind of situations create water crisis kind of situation. You have seen in Latur, water express had to be sent there. So, what to be done? Talks about instead of flood irrigation, we should promote micro irrigation. The government has increased the budgetary allocation over this as well as this budget. The sprinkler irrigation means every drop to be productive, every drop to be counted. And to increase the productivity per drop. 
So it had been the slogan this year's budget, third row, more crop. So it increases the water use efficiency, more delicious use of the water. So sprinkler drip irrigation. And the question has been asked this year, means 2016 means. Later, water yes, I remember we do question. Water efficiency and then uh, question over uh, micro irrigation. Policies, you can, in the same way you can talk about, because policies should be rational, not in a way that promotes overuse. Promoting the crops suitable to the soil quality and availability of wood. So, more diversification of crops is required, right? Not having over dependence over wheat and rice in the. So, it has been one of the. Uh, impact of green revolution that still find wheat and rice in the northern plains, even though the soil doesn't support, still rice is cultivated in Haryana with the help of the canal based irrigation. So, diversification is required, required to promote uh, less water intensive crops like pulses, oil seeds, bajra, zawar. These kind of crops should be promoted. Growth resistant crops, less water intensive crops should be increased. Even pulses now are part of our National Food Security Act as well. If we compare, generally India exports what? India exports wheat, rice, cotton as well. So these are water, in water in intensive in crops. crops. So in fact, we are exporting water in fact. Right? Whereas China generally exports the crops which are less water intensive and imports those crops which are water intensive. So this was example was given in this year economic survey. So it shows how, in fact, not only we are exporting crops, right? We are exporting water along with that. So it's better to promote the exports of less water intensive and more well, more value added products, of course. And for the value added products, we need to develop the food processing industries. Another benefit of micro irrigation is that uh, the use of inputs gets maximized, whether fertilizer or any other inputs. So, to promote the diversification of crops like pulses, oil seeds, and all these, and use the micro irrigation, one of the suggestions was given that the socio economic benefit should be publicized because people don't know. The benefits. The farmers they don't they're not aware properly of the benefits. So the socio-economic benefit should be publicized among the farmers. So what is fertigation? Fertigation kya hota hai? So water mixing fertilizer with water and then correct. So it increases the Efficiency of both fertilizer and water in that case. What else could be done for irrigation and for these uh, purposes? MGRG could be used for that. This year budget has proposed that MGNRG to be used. To construct farm ponds and dug wells. Talab hote hain chote chote kheto ke andar hi. So 
MG energy to be used to construct those compounds and elements. Right. A long term irrigation fund under the bar that is also to be created. So these are major points under irrigation. I do today uh, because I want to take agriculture topic as a whole because it is highly important topic. When you are sure that it will fetch, it will give you three questions, two to three questions in a paper. So it should cover each and every topic. So it's better that I will cover this topic as a whole in a uh, totality. Right now, just tell you the points. Ki what are the major core areas which I should discuss? Right. And then the major discussion I will do in the next class. So one of the core area was irrigation. If any points are there, I will uh, come to you again. Secondly, on fertilizers. Third, mechanization. Fourth, credit. Fifth, seeds. Sixth, insurance. Seven, fourth, harvest losses. Or you can say, initial of supply chain. Market, that is, national agricultural markets. Unified national agriculture markets. Eight. Financial reforms. Nine. Mega food parks will also come under this post harvest process. Nine. Food processing industries. Ten. Extension services. Sorry. Light sectors. What comes in light? Light sectors. Fisheries, animal husbandry, livestock. In R and ICR Agriculture Universities and one of the Vertical protein farming. Vertical? Vertical protein farming. Okay. Yes. I was giving an example how in coming years you could see these 
hydrogen origin, vertical and floating soil. It's been uh, developed in Singapore. Japan also vertical from yes. mushrooms. Yes. So let's see how uh, how time it takes to be developed in there. You see the image, or I'll show you the next next class. The image is how actually it happened. So kind of building on floating over the water and as it floats, the will shift. Because we don't we cannot expand horizontally. We have the limitation of the fields. So this way we expect innovation in agriculture. Sustainable agriculture. But still, if question comes, remember 16, 17 points of agriculture, we are going to rock in the answer. So, need to remember, even if you don't remember 17 points, remember 13, 14 points of agriculture. Right? And in every point, these are topics in fact. They can ask you one question over the right side. They can ask you one specific question over irrigation. For example, they ask this here. So, in this you bring an outline. What are the core areas in agriculture from where question can be asked? And prepare all these core areas. And prepare in totality as well. For example, question can come as an overall question over agriculture. Issues in agriculture and give you a suggestion to tackle those issues. Then all these topics you need to cover in a concise manner. Right, so you should be prepared for both kind of the questions. A general overall question and specific question over specific segments or sectors. Right, so that's all for uh, today's class. In next class, we will try to uh, cover this agriculture. It will take time definitely, but I'm sure uh, it is highly beneficial for that. Thank you. Okay, so that's all for today's class. If you like this video, you hit like and subscribe to our channel as well.